you'll hear a very cogent explanation in science exactly why we're screwed. Or not screwed. How's that? Yep. And welcome back. We have the Tim here. And Tim, you always have a lot of humor. Uh, and you're probably, I would say, the best uh, geopolitical military analyst that I know. Uh, there's lots of people that are good on Thank geopolitics. Uh, Joel Skousen is good on kind of trying to cut through the garbage. Uh, we have uh, people like Gerald Slenty who haven't had him recently, but he's really good at analyzing those things. The military strategy and so on. And, of course, the thing I like what you do is because you take it from a Christian point of view. There's a lot of we call pseudo-Christians or bizarre Christians out there that really do things that, you know, make me cringe. And, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of cringy things happening or about to happen. We, one we opened up a few weeks ago, which is now all over the news, is the uh, ceremony starting on the 19th, which is the 13-day ceremony of Moloch and Beltane, which ends up in the Feast of, uh, starts of Baal, with the uh, Palmyra Gate being reproduced digitally in New York City and London and going to be in a thousand cities. Yeah, um, actually, uh, Michael Snyder uh, broke that story, ran several articles, and I was uh, absolutely amazed for a uh, better part of a week. Nobody else in the alternative media was carrying that except myself and uh, you and I on your show. And finally, uh, people were waking up and uh, saying, huh? Well, I, 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 well we, I, took our, I took the, uh, we did a uh, explanation of this, remember, on our live stream TV channel? And uh, we're getting a lot of hits on it. People are really, what? You're getting. No, this is an actually an invitation to Apollyonis or the Antichrist to show up now. Yeah, it, okay? it, it is. You know, uh, I have a pretty wild imagination, but in a million years, I couldn't have come up with something like that. I mean, they literally are talking about these uh, gates being in about a thousand cities all over the planet. Right. But it's also in what's called a jubilee year or a shemitah year and it's 120 shemitah so the next major event i expect the next major signpost maybe things happen before uh that will be nasty like economic devastation and some other minor wars uh, yeah maybe it, world war three also no, no, course, that's not going to happen yet no that's that's not going to happen yet because all these well, wars also, are all different also of course you have uh, uh planet x or planet nine as they're calling it now moving uh, closer uh, so that it may uh, cause no, no, a, a large no. number Tim, of Tim, uh, comments. Tim, Tim, stop, 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 triple stop. Uh, I'm an expert in astrophysics. I had Professor McCanny on here, cross indexed him. All those people putting that stuff out, and I get blasted with emails all over the place. There is no, no evidence there's anything other than the Oort cloud 0.73 light years out. There's gravity waves coming in from this dwarf star complex. There is no evidence whatsoever of a inner solar system planet. Remember... Well, I hope the, you're right. I don't, I, I, no, 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 no. There's no hope. I've had two semesters of astronomy f almost 50 years ago, so I don't claim to be an expert. Okay, well, I'm an expert, okay? I also worked at U.S. Space Command, so I have contacts. I can tell you in absolute certainty, all the fools out there like John DiNardo and many other people that are saying this stuff, they know otherwise they're actually acting as government ops. you got to understand... There's, there is an object out there, and it's causing gravity waves to increase volcanism and earthquakes and so on. There's no evidence. Now, there's other objects. For example, the Hale-Bopp comet was four Earth masses that passed through the, the what's called the galactic, uh, you know, the solar plane uh, where the planets rotate around the sun, uh, and was was actually, they thought it was a third uh, letter of Fatima, and it was going to hit the planet Earth, and that impact us back in 1997. Some fool sent me some information last night that in 2016 we're going to have an impact from an incoming uh no you don't even you can have no, action I, 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 I don't believe we're going to have an yeah, impact now but here's the event i was about to tell you before you interrupted again <laughs> is the big event we need to watch is that obama wants to leave office with a peace treaty between sunni and shiite islam and he wants to have a partitioning of the state of israel with the with the palestinians getting not only a state but also and he's working very hard at this he's also working very hard to actually let the jews have access to not the Temple Mount, but the place called the Springs of Gihon, which is below the Eastern Gate, below the Temple of Antonius, because that's not where the Temple was built, the Temple of Antonius, because every stone was ripped out. In fact, Josephus, who actually wrote about it, says you would not have ever thought there was a building there. But remember now, the, 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 the they call the Wailing Wall is still standing after 2,000 years, so there is absolutely no academic or other evidence that this wall was one of the walls of the ancient Temple. None. Zero. Not over 10,000. That is correct. 
There's 10,000 troops that were actually stationed there by the Romans. This is not a minor area. The Romans had to control what's called the Silk Trail that went through Israel, from Syria right through to, to Turkey and all the way to China. People have to understand that my great-great-grandfather owned a caravan that went with my great-grandmother twice a year to China. She used to walk beside the camels, walking all the way through the Silk Trail to China to get silk and other jewels. That's a long and walk. <laughs> Right. These are tough people walking through deserts to uh, from one oasis to another, putting on 20 or 30 pounds, losing 40 pounds, walking besides the camels through scorching. You know, they walked mainly at night, by the way. They walked at night or in the evening. They didn't travel during the day. They would stay in tents during the day, and then they'd bivouac. Then they'd get up and start moving, literally at sundown, and start walking through the deserts in these areas at night by the starlight. Yeah. Okay? So people need to understand exactly what, what we're talking about here. We are moving to a time where I expect we're going to have three things. Economic devastation occur as the bank's too big to fail, but it will start to fail, possibly this year, very likely, before Obama leaves, before the election. Major ISIS or ISIL terrorism. And if, if Obama has his way, he's going to have a peace treaty that will partition the state of Israel and start a Palestinian state where he's already done a deal with the Iranians that's insane. They have missiles that they launch now, and they're giving us the middle finger saying, we're not going to stop our missile tests and they write on the side of it in farsi and in hebrew to, to destroy the state of israel and the, and the israelis justifiably are freaked out whether you like them or not you do not want to have nukes coming in or missiles with advanced weapon systems on israel you know it, that will guarantee well that war. will guarantee ww3 right and that that is why it says i shall make israel a fire pot among sheaves let me tell you it's in the bible the book of joel etc God's not not to be mocked, okay, because he's beyond time and space. When he says something, he pronounces something that is in his eternal eye. is something like it's already happened. And that's scary because, you know, God is a God that's just and and, and, and kind and, and graceful. But when grace ends, judgment falls. And we're getting close to the end of grace. Uh, I would say so, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I always say, you step back from the trees, look at the forest, then step back, and really get off the planet and look at the broad patterns that you see. Right. And if you look at at uh, the broad-based, uh, and not total collapse, but serious uh, degradation of morality uh, throughout so much of the world, if you look at the, uh, in, at least in the Western world, uh, the uh, we're in an economic depression and, and looking at a, a total global collapse economically, right. financially. If you look at uh, all the wars, uh, if you look at the pattern of wars beginning with the Napoleonic Wars, which were kind of the beta test uh, of global warfare, two global wars and countless other wars. Uh, if you, re I mean, the, uh, there's a really good YouTube series on the Great War. And each uh, week they come out with at least one uh, new video which uh, looks at uh, the events of that week a uh, uh, hundred years ago. And when you really look at that, the slaughter that took place there and in the Second World War, which followed it 20 years or so later, you see that it was absolutely senseless. It was just uh, a mass slaughter of human beings. And that is uh, can only be described as demonic uh, in, in its scope and in its, in its very nature. And we're headed. To, this is you see a rise of of behavior that is so bizarre and so twisted. It is not even nuts in terms of a, a human perspective. It's, it's the problem is it's not coming from a human perspective. It's coming well, from a, to, uh, to my, a warped oh, spiritual I, I, dimension. I gave a little uh, quick dissertation of Tex Mars will be back on the program, uh, I think Thursday I like next Tex. week. He's going to be on the 21st in hour one. And uh, he gave a 10-point thing as to why Donald Trump is a dragon slayer. You have to understand, though, that all these senior people in politics, in one way or another, are in a secret order. Uh, I know the Masonic hand signs, and on the picture on the front of People magazine, Trump has got what's called the lion paw sign on his chest, okay? So he's in what's called a white hat good order, trying to do good. And if we look at these 10 points here, we can run through them quickly and then you can analyze it with your news. Um, and I gave some uh, little, there's a couple of things uh, in the election stuff. What, what news do you have there? And I'll 
throwing some interesting factoids. I heard well, that uh, Trump uh, is actually. Uh, I have one article. Just uh, I have some really great videos. Yeah, you, there's one. Uh, it's a YouTube video. Uh, Donald Trump, the American uh, Gladiator, and <laughs> you got to see it. It's great. I mean, it is absolutely great. And if you go to my blog, uh, I'll do Lord Sterling uh, uh, Europe, and I'll get you right there. Do Google search, but it it is great. Anyway, uh, here here's an interesting article. How many states does Hillary have to lose before the mainstream uh, news media starts calling it a losing streak? Uh, when Bernie Sanders lost six con test uh the media was saying well wh when are you going to drop out why aren't you going to drop out well uh sanders has now won uh i think seven seven of the, uh, seven of the last eight yeah yeah and uh quite frankly although right now hillary supposedly has a 12 point lead in new york i wouldn't be too shocked to see sanders take new york uh, now whether he does or not uh, I, I like I said uh, uh, last week on on your show, Bill. Um, I often uh, gave uh, Bernie Sanders credit for for some good things that he said. Now, not that I, I I like his overall position, but when he won one of the recent states, and I listened to uh, his acceptance speech, so it was maybe ten minutes of that long. Right. And I think there was about three different times he talked about. Uh, uh, gay rights and uh, lesbian rights and transgender rights and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, hold it. He doesn't it, talk about Ronzo, does he? Doesn't yeah, talk about well, the, you know, he, he's repeating this uh, globalist, uh, Illuminati uh, mantra, and he's right. running for president, and, and maybe there's 2% of the electorate, and he's probably already got them anyway. Why, you know, he's, he's using this as a, uh, his election, and, and, and Hillary does the same thing. Of course, everybody knows she's a dyke, but uh, that, that pushes this uh, uh, agenda. Now, you know, I have tolerance for, for gay people. I'm not a fascist or something, but I don't like it shoved down my throat. I don't like uh, uh, children being uh, told that uh, this is wonderful well, or that, this that's is part perfectly of the education normal. Ca it, it's California, not normal. It's spiritually and psychologically screwed up. Well, well, that's what's happening in California. It's taught here as part of the education. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's not just California. And some places, you know, they're saying there's 54 different genders. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Okay. I, I, I mean, I you know. That's uh, both pathetic. cultural. But anyway, uh, uh, here, here's <laughs> the, the real danger with Sanders. And by the way, he has a brother who is a hard, hard left labor politician in England. And uh, Bernie Sanders comes from the Jewish Bolshevik tradition. And we need to hit this uh, he uh, nail right on the head. They killed uh, 80 to 100 million people in the former Russian Empire. Uh, a, I mean, enormous numbers of people in the Ukraine alone, they called the Hordor, where they literally stripped every ounce of, of food, of grain, of uh, cattle, etc., from uh, what they called the rich peasants, uh, that is, peasants who had a few acres of land, and they literally starved them. And if they, the Cheka would go around, the secret police would go around, and if they found that uh, a family had, oh, maybe had a, a bushel of grain they hid or, or, or something, they would take the man of the house out in the, uh, the, the front of the house and ritualistically slaughter him and cut him up in front of the family. I mean, right. these were incredibly cruel people, and and in the Ukraine alone, they killed millions. And which well, was the breadbasket, by the way. What, what we have to understand is that what, what millions. Bernie so wants this to be, hard, uh, hard left tradition that Bernie is, it has come out of. Well, uh, that's scary. It, hell, he's what, even more scary than, than that evil witch, right out of hell, uh, crook uh, Hillary Clinton. Well, let's put it this way. I've decided that Bernie is actually now going to be his middle name. His first name is going to be Vladimir Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll have to call him President Vlad. How's that? Uh, you know, maybe I've lived too long. I don't know. My, uh, by the way, my yesterday, uh, my Aunt Dorothy Alexander turned 100 years old, which was uh, my brother and I went to see her, and it was 
uh, quite a uh, quite hey, she's quite sharp. Uh, she lives in assisted living, but has a, a apartment and uh, uh, quite sharp. And uh, she still smokes. And I said, Aunt Dorothy, you know this this smoking is really <laughs> bad for your health. <laughs> you better stop. You might not make two hundred. But uh, uh, mm-hmm. I guess maybe I've been around too long. But to, to think that in my lifetime now I see a hard left communist or neo-communist actually uh, running for president of the United States and maybe could even get elected. What? Well, here's I mean, what's happening. I, here's what I think on the Republican side. I've heard that um, that they're taking a repivoting now as this new director of campaigns. Now, they should have started a year ago working on the ground, which is why people like Cruz can work in Colorado and get them to totally not have a, 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 a you know vote, but hand over all the uh, the delegates over to Cruz. Uh, the, the well, that was campaign. absolutely outrageous. They yeah, canceled well, the, the primary is, and, mm-hmm. and gave all the votes to uh, all the delegates. Yeah, but here, here's, the re- here's the reason for that. Trump doesn't have a ground game, but he has a lot of votes and a lot of people because they know that Cruz is corrupt. What's going to happen is the most corrupt state in the United States and probably one of the most corrupt on the planet is Colorado. I know having lived there, worked there, dealt with the Colorado Board of Medical Examiners, dealt with the state, uh, state uh, government. I know how evil they are. I know that the CIA directorship has moved to Colorado. I know that the NSA is there. I know that the alternate capital of the United States is not Washington, D.C. It's Colorado Springs. I know that the center for the mark of the beast is at Falcon, Colorado, Shriver Air Force Base. The giant array underground is a primary note for the actual mark. The worst elements of the worst on the entire planet are in Colorado. Not Beijing, China. Yeah, not but Brussels. there's also a lot of good people in the state. Yeah, but, but what I find with a lot of the good people, the ones who are working in these classified agencies, they can't talk to you. I took care of them. They were there. They were. They had a form of what I call uh, industrialized paranoia that you couldn't ask certain questions, and if you did, they want you to going to give them information back to tell them what their buddies are doing in other, another projects yeah, in the same know. building. I, okay, you know, I know. Uh, they often come uh, to see me actually for that, that reason. Speaking of that, okay. Uh, one of the interesting things, uh, and, and it's, uh, I have a video on it posted on my blog today, but one of the interesting things about this is uh, it appears uh, maybe that their deal has been cut with Obama not to prosecute Hillary, but here's the problem with that. Uh, there's way over 100 FBI agents involved, plus a lot of senior uh, people in the Department of Justice, but also because Hillary basically was selling secrets to foreign powers and using this scam of, of putting them on an in, unsecure server and then taking donations from them for their foundation, uh, which doesn't seem to give money to any charity <laughs> other than the Clintons. Tim, uh, that's, that's not our biggest problem. A lot our of people problem. in our intelligence agencies are vehemently opposed to letting yeah, Hillary right. have a pass, just like right. the FBI agents. Her biggest so problem is, is not is, that. Go to her biggest problem, she's not indicted. It's going to be the biggest thing since Watergate. That's her minor problem. The biggest problem she's facing now is rape gate. That's, that's true. i got to go about that. Yeah, We're going to absolutely. talk about that when we come back. Uh, <clears throat> this is probably the most important and also the strangest election cycle in history. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the reason for it is we are in the end times. I mean, a lot of people are non-Christians. And the problem we have, often have to deal with we have to do it with friends, relatives, or not Christians, or we call funky Christians. They're kind of like, know about Jesus, but they're not really sold on Jesus. They don't pray to God. They really think when things get real tough, they start to pray to some God, maybe a Buddhist God or God knows what. <clears throat> the problem is people have our whole, we're going to have a text on next Thursday, the first hour, and the book he's going over is, is uh, basically Churches Gone Wild here in America. Now there's I want, to, I want to just, without interruptions for a minute, I just want to run through 10 points and I want you to expand on them. His 10 points basically that Trump is going to slay dragons are immigration, rule of law, trade, jobs, blacks and minorities, interventionism, climate change, entitlements, and Christianity. Now, That's fine. yeah, well, maybe I missed one. Uh, enti- entitlements, yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. So, Basically, to summarize, without getting too long, immigration, he's right. But the problem is putting a thousand-mile-long wall. I know this from my contacts inside, uh, how can I say it, contacts inside to know what's going on in the drug cartels. They're not only tunnels underneath the, to get into San Diego, but they bring in a mini-sub right up the coast of California. 
They also have coming in an airport. They busted one recently. Man. Or they or they fly them in, and they are in collaboration with the CIA and NSA and uh, the Justice Department to fly them in. So that's you know you have to when you're saying there's a problem in New Hampshire with uh, with uh, heroin, that's not coming in from Mexico. That's coming in with flights that the CIA are bringing in through airports like uh, Aurora Airport uh, in Colorado. Okay, trade. You know, uh, Ivana Trump, Ivanka Trump, uh, Trump's daughter, and my wife was out. She actually saw these markers that Ivanka Trump in this at one of the stores. It's called Ross, and my wife likes to go there because you often find these gem things for your kitchen or whatever. And she has two clotheslines that were there, and they were actually both. One was made in Vietnam, the other was made in China. So you have to understand, Trump himself has business in other countries. It's one thing to say you're going to stop. Uh, you know, Nabisco from moving to Mexico or Ford building $1.6 billion plant starting this July. But you also have to, uh, you know, cut the BS that, uh, you know, we have a global economy and uh, <clears throat> he has profited from the global economy just like anybody else. Jobs. Uh, he wants to reemploy the middle class. Well, what you, the first thing you need to do is stop the hemorrhaging of jobs. Now, it's not a matter of just putting tariffs. It's a matter of having an international system where you can actually uh, get the the advantages the companies have by parking their money out in other countries. And although Obama mentioned this, the government doesn't have any way of doing this directly, but they can. Uh, they have the swift transfer, money transfer system. They, they have no desire. Transaction. They have no desire. First, you okay? have to so, have the desire to do something. So when I hear Trump say this, this there. scares the heck out of the globalists because in a matter of days, not months or years, they could actually track all these finances of, of, say, Apple, Corporation, or anybody else. They already know. Blacks and minorities. Now, I don't know anybody that with black or minority that's actually an American citizen, especially if they've been here for 100 years, why they would not support Trump. Blacks, 55% unemployment. And when they say that, that Trump is a racist, look at all his friends. Uh, he's got black friends, Hispanic friends. There's absolutely no evidence I've, that this I've, man I've never a, seen any uh, racism from him. Uh, no, it, no. You know, yeah, uh, so this is a total a lot slur. Of people want to say he's a racist because no, he they, wants they to stop illegal they... immigrants. Mm -hmm. That's not racism. Uh, one of my no, best that, friends uh, 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 is uh, my old, one of my oldest buddies' wife. She came from Guatemala. I, uh, right. in fact, uh, we were. This was all oh, my lord, decades ago. I even sent uh, uh, some money at the time. We were young, and I didn't have much, but I sent him some money to help get her in the country. But he got her in the country legally. And, right. uh, but what we need is a rapid immigration system that works. Let me finish my list here. Yeah. Number six, interventionism. Trump intends to bring troops home. Now, this is where I strongly disagree with Trump. Strongly. And the reason is we don't want stupid wars like Libya and Iraq, where, you know, we have Colin Powell. I call him Colin, I call him Colin Powell, B-O-W-E-L, not Colin Powell, because he's full of, you know what I mean, you know, fecal matter. And what we have is a situation where, you know, how did our oil get under their land? It's amazing, isn't it? And then we give it to the Chinese. <laughs> yeah, right. See, we give, and then we give it to the Chinese, and the Rothschilds sell it to them at a premium. And then the third, fifth largest oil refining company in the world now didn't exist before the Gulf Wars, called the China Oil Company, okay? So, you know, uh, intervention, yes. We need to immediately call up Putin and China and collaborate to get rid of ISIS and ISIL, which the Russians, we aren't just going to back off and let the Russians do it. That's ridiculous. We need to collaborate with them. And it's well, not by the we, way, just, along with the Israelis, created ISIS, and it's funded by exactly. Saudi Arabia, Qatar. It's based in Turkey, uh, you know. And and when we were bombing for over a but, year, but remember, supposedly we're bombing the heck out of ISIS. We were bombing now, vacant villages that had been bombed a hundred times. Tim, Tim, the reason uh, why we're doing these interventions is at the behest of globalists and what are called the Zion Nazis. Now, people have to understand this is not for the benefit of people living in Israel. Zionism Absolutely. has nothing to in do fact, with it's the really sacrament. just the opposite, by the way. It's the opposite. It's actually to make sure there never was it going to be an Abrahamic Israeli state, which will be both Christian and Jewish. It's not going to be just a, quote, Jewish state. And by the way, when Messiah comes back, there won't be any separation from the two houses of Israel. They will all understand and know Messiah from Psalm 2. Well, now, I so don't have a is, problem with there being an, uh, essentially a Jewish state. I have a problem well, I with do. the mistreatment I have a very of the big Palestinians. Problem. No, no, I have, I have a, a very problem big with problem. perpetual warfare. No, 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 no. I have a very big problem, and I have a Hebrew Koenic background. I can tell you why I have my problem. When Messiah, when they set up the sacrifice by rabbinic law from Zafed, north of the Sea of Genesaret, they can only do it on Sakat, and it is the abomination that desolate is 
is, and this is thus saith the Lord, not my opinion, the abomination of desolation is the Palestinian state, which is desolation caused by the abomination of a blood sacrifice at the springs of Gihon below the eastern gate. That is the abomination of desolates. Well, they, they're done. very close, by the way. They, they bred right, the Right, so that you cannot have a... There, there are no Jews in the kingdom when Jesus comes back to either accept Jesus or they cease to exist. Okay, so that's the facts. But that, uh, what so I'm saying is that, that uh, sacrifice... They're prepared for it. They, they they have all the instruments. Which is why that's the tribulation. That is the first day. And I can tell you, I'm the only one on earth saying that the first day of the tribulation is a future Sakai. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you it's coming because we're in right now the birth pangs today. And if it's during this year with the Shemitah year, it means that before Obama leaves office in November, he will have partitioned a Palestinian state, which he said he's going to do before he leaves. And he's going to allow the Jews and they can set up a temple of meeting at the springs of Gihon, where the Jews already have all the land and territory, they could sit up overnight and start a blood sacrifice, which is the abomination that desolates. Okay, so people in India know that. Now, so far as non-interventionalism, he's wrong. Okay, the fact is we need to stop making stupid wars at the behest of the state of, it's a real hell, Israel, and yeah. the globalist people like Netanyahu is a CFR member, <coughs> just like Heidi Cruz. Ted Cruz's well, war is a boondoggle, and it creates deficit spending, which is profit for the global banking <laughs> cartel. Exactly. Now, the next is veterans. It is beating our young men and women and treating them like garbage, and, of course, giving free benefits to illegals and not, and cutting benefits to our professionals. And by the way, just uh, literally, uh, you know, what they, want, what they should do to fix the problem is let our veterans go to any hospital and give them benefits. So it doesn't cost them anything or co-pays. And then go to any hospital system, whether it's Kaiser or... You know, here, you know, the, the best hospitals, let them go where they want for their health problems. And, they, and you start either closing down or reverbishing and properly um, hiring properly trained staff and not have backup lines. So the, my solution to the VA thing is forget the VA. Uh, you can fix it over time. But immediately what you need to do and is we also have to fix to our hospitals, Dr. Bill, because I got to tell you. The, you know, uh, a, a over-the-counter Tylenol administered uh, in the hospital, the average statistical price for an over-the-counter Tylenol is $49 in a hospital, uh, when yeah, it probably uh, costs them five cents. I'm, re I'm writing a health care policy statement on how to fix it, and it goes considerably farther than either Bernie Sanders They don't want to fix it. They don't want to fix no, it. No, I can tell them how to fix it. They need to get rid of state licensure, malpractice, and uh, fee for service. Those are the first three. This is the top. Uh, Tim, I want to mention a couple things. And this, by the way, I'm a medical legal doctor, so I know what it's like in court. The most powerful thing in court is a thing called quote marks. And I'm quoting the actual statements by Trump, so this is not my conjecture, that he is possibly making deals with kingmakers, which is Kasich and, and Marco Rubio. They're, those two are, one or the other is very likely, if he doesn't look like his delegate count is getting high enough, because he wants to avoid a second vote at a contested convention. If you can get the numbers before the convention, he's laughing. Now, if there's a fight between uh, Trump and Hillary Clinton, he's going to bring up Rapegate. So I want to expand on that because we're going to bring on this lady, Sally Miller, who had an affair with uh, with uh, Bill Clinton. She was actually... Long time gonna, affair. She was also in a long term affair. She was also uh, going to be... She was actually, you know, good looking enough. She was actually going to be a Miss America. Uh, pageant, etc. She was Miss Miss Arkansas. She's still an attractive uh, lady. Right. right. So, so uh, I so, spoke to her what two months ago, uh, and uh, well, we're not to spoil the story, but uh, I think what she uh, a week from today is going to be quite explosive, right. and uh, it could very well change the election. Well, I'm, a I'm week from today, here's, folks. Now, here's the thing: if if she goes down, we're going to be dealing with a Bolshevik. Jew, and we're not talking about a regular Jew. Remember now, the career of people that call themselves Jews are of the synagogue of Satan, and I can say that because I have Hebrew background. So don't say I'm being racist or whatever. Because how can I say it if I'm a Semite myself? Okay. Yeah, but most so. most Jews are are just people. Okay, look, but Bernie Sanders is from this this communist Bolshevik tradition that that in Russia, in the Russian Empire, killed 80 to 100 million people. They killed so many people, they don't even know of how many millions. Right. Uh, they, 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 they especially went after the Christians, yeah. the Orthodox yeah. priests, the Baptist uh, preachers. Uh, it, it, was, it was horrific, just horrific. Well, 
Well, what I and, expect uh, in the that, election... And that tradition has no place in American politics. Okay. Well, I still expect the following, even though I know all this is happening. I expect that uh, Comey will uh, will uh, absolve Hillary of no intentions, even though she did crimes. Even if it's by accident, she committed a crime that would mean that she should be indicted. But they're not going to. Number one. And that's why there's this bad deal where you see Obama coming up with this, you know, the first time in eight years, a, 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 a um, interview with Chris Wallace to try to tell the ultra right, hey, I'm not going to prosecute your... And, me, and when he says that we don't have any political influence, period, end of statement, he repeats it several times. Look, Obama's not capable of telling the truth except that it's <laughs> When they go, when he, has his, years, when he has the IRS actually prosecuting conservatives, when they have them targeting people that are potential enemies, Obama and his henchman staff at his White House are into everybody's back pocket doing evil. Okay, so Obama is a liar from the very moment he gets up in the morning. He's not capable of breathing. Maybe Obama. for a special treat, the last days in office, he'll tell the truth about something. No, he uh, won't. probably not. He'll only do it. <laughs> He'll only do it if he's actually in a fugue state having a seizure. <laughs> no, no, I think it's the, the demons possessing him won't allow it. <laughs> Truth is not in him. You see, when you're dealing with Lucifer and his minions, his, his fallen angels, Truth is not with him. Love is not with him. Kindness is not with him. Lo- you know, uh, fairness is not with him. Thing. Holiness is not with him. They are the opposite of God. Well, if we pray for him, believe it or not, because, you know, man, remember now, this mulatto man is going to go to the place of destruction. His soul is going to be annihilated unless we pray for him. And God won't relieve us from the oppression of this monster, which is a human being, unless we pray for him. The same with Hillary Clinton. You're all right, and and that is (laughs) is a matter that I don't... uh focus on enough uh you know i, I look at some of these characters and think man to, you need to you need to be hanging from I a finish rope up all my prayers but we do need to for pray the for these doers. characters i pray for george soros and obama and all the other people i don't even know their names i pray for god to relieve them from the evil that is oppressing them because in this is a good example i know you say all jews are okay here's the facts okay if you go to any synagogue in america or the world everybody outside the jews are, are soulless dogs like monkeys. That's a fact. That's what's taught in all the synagogues. You have to know, and I remember I was wanting to learn Hebrew about 25 years ago, and I asked a, a young, very intelligent uh, Hebrew scholar who just finished eight years at a yeshiva in New York to teach me. And he's going to teach me remotely. And I said, I don't care what it costs. I will pay you to teach me. He said, you know, you Christians don't get it. He said, I'm going to show you respect because you're a Cohen, right? Because I'm descended from Cohen's. He said, the fact is, we are closer to Harry Potter <laughs> than you Christians. We have no connection. You know, we, we're involved with divinations and summoning demons and using, you know, uh, all kinds of occult technologies. I said, and you don't understand that, do you? I said, so you stupid Christians. And he said, you're just pagans. I said, you don't even know. You think that you're even the Messiah you have is is a is a uh, you know the the hebrew messiah which we know is supposed to come at the time of the end of history and then he said and again remember he was talking about the fact that even many rabbis don't believe the state of israel should exist until messiah comes and messiah by the way is the son of a jewish man and a jewish woman not a product of god coming down and you know having sex with uh, with a virgin by the way, the word virgin just meant a woman who hadn't had a baby yet. That's the facts. That's the Middle Eastern truth. Just like I tell you about the, about the cheek of brotherhood, that you see, strike that cheek, well, you have to have I, a death I struggle. Well, I believe that uh, uh, Mary uh, literally was a virgin, that she yeah, was here's impregnated the point. by the power of the Holy Spirit. But here, here's the point, though, and I'm just, I raise this question. Did Jesus have a soul? How Does, does God have a soul? No, no, I said, no, no, I said well, what, 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 if you have a soul, did Jesus have a soul? What is a soul? Is the soul the Holy Spirit? God is God. No, no, you don't. My question cuts through that. The Spirit of Jesus is the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, yes? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy no, Spirit. No, no, right? does Jesus soul the Holy Spirit, which is God? Yes or no? Uh, you only I, have a yes I, or no answer. Yes or no. 
Is Jesus? I think you I, I think the whole question is wrong. No, it's not. It's real simple. And the reason is Jesus' soul is the Holy Spirit because it's God. He couldn't have a soul that, other than God. And the fact that he he's is not God. a separate. Exactly. He's holy he's God, and he's also he's holy man. That was the, that no, was no, you don't understand that. Very early Here's what I point. My, my point is the reason why he's man is because his flesh is man. Mary, they also say, had no original sin. Original sin is real simple, and people may not understand this because they think it's a piece of fruit. It's simply deciding for yourself what is good or evil. That's the tree of knowledge. There is only one sin that anybody can do, and it's only one type. It's not shamaying, not hearing and doing God's will. You can't sin against man. You can't sin against the environment. You can do evil. You cannot sin except disobeying the will of the Most High. So if you're a human being and you're born on this planet, there's no way after the fall you don't have original sin. It's impossible. And you can't be born with an original sin because we will decide for ourselves what is good or evil. No matter how wonderful we are, how nice we are, we're going to decide well, for ourselves what is good or evil. Yeah, you have to understand not all uh, the Orthodox really don't get into this original sin. No, but, my, no, but, but that's the point, though. You know, people need to understand God, Jesus' name was Emmanuel, which is God with us, which means his soul and the spirit of the Most High were fused as one. He was God from the moment he was conceived. Okay? But the God part of him was his soul and spirit. His physical body was from the father, J Joseph, and his mother. People need to understand that. And that's why this is one of the reasons why Jews were never accept Christians, because their idea of what we accept as Messiah is pagan. It's completely pagan. Did you know that? Every single thing. And by the way, the Jews have not only the keys to the kingdom, they also have the book, which means all the questions are in the New Testament and all the answers are in the Old. So you can never understand the New Testament things like the book of Revelation look at, unless you look at the book of Joel, Habakkuk, and Daniel. You can't. It's not possible. And if you have the original Aramaic and Hebrew, you can actually understand it exactly what it meant. Because the answers, and God did this as a, as a way of saying, uh, they've got two houses, the house of Ephraim, Ephraim that went apostate, and the house of Judah that kept the book and understands the keys of the kingdom, the identity of the Messiah had to be what this is, okay? And that's why no Jew, no Jew can accept Messiah because our Messiah is pagan. Do you follow? That's nasty. Well... My Messiah is Jesus Christ. Jesus that's Christ is a Messiah, God. and he is God in the flesh. But people need to understand, that's why the wall is there between us and the Jews, and the, there will be no Jews when Jesus comes back with Messiah, because when he returns, they will see, as it says in, sec, in the second Psalm, they will see the one they have pierced, because they will realize he already came 2,000 years ago, and he's a Jew, which means praiser. God inhabits his praises of his people. That's why he had to be a Jew. Interesting, eh? Well, folks, get right with God. Uh, next Tuesday is going to be real interesting on this show. It will be. I think uh, Rapegate is going to finish off Hillary Clinton. Could be. Attention, neutral.